Mrs. Clinton, you know, the book, the title, the cover of her book. You don't need to know any more. The top half of the what happened, the bottom half, Hillary Rodham Clinton. That's what happened. She tried. She got kicked out. And she still can't get over it. And funny things are happening on her book signing tour. Anyway, it's great to have you. The telephone number is 800-282-2882. <clears throat> Mrs. Clinton, in her book, and again, I just want to say, have you seen the book? Look at the cover. On the top half, Hillary Clinton. On the bottom half, what is it? What went wrong? What happened? The, the, the You don't even need to read the book. The cover explains it. Hillary Rodham Clinton, what happened? She happened. Period. You don't need to read it. That's why there are people like me who will tiptoe through this thing and find humorous anecdotes like this. Now, I've, I've always mentioned Hillary Clinton. One of the problems is she, she does not connect with people. It, and it's not something you can practice doing. It's, it's, it's your person. Trump connects with people. And what, what I mean by this, when, when Trump does a rally, the people in that, in that arena, wherever it is, have a personal connection. They believe Donald Trump is them. They believe Trump is speaking just to them. They don't think that Trump is condescending. They don't think Trump believes he's better than anybody else. Uh, this is it's akin to the Q factor on uh, with with the particular movie stars and television personalities. There's a Q factor that basically measures things that we call connection and you either have it or you don't and it's it's like if you can't throw a 95 mile an hour fastball nobody can teach you to do it if you if you if you're not likable nobody can coach you to likability in 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 the political realm or in the celebrity realm you either are or you aren't and it, it, a lot of factors believability trust um genuineness there's a whole lot of things, and, and of course your physical appearance, but that's not as, uh, in terms of connection, physical appearance is not nearly as necessary as other characteristics or personality traits. Mrs. Clinton, even throwing the physical out, does not have the ingredients necessary to connect with people. And it's because it's obvious that she doesn't want to. And she even, she admits this knowingly or unknowingly, in her book. For example, she recounts a moment when a mother dragged her daughter by the arm to apologize to the former Secretary of State for not voting. So Hillary was doing a personal appearance somewhere, and a woman brought her daughter to apologize to Hillary for not voting. Now, that mother is an odd kook ball anyway, but it happened. You throw Hillary into this mix and you have, you have all the ingredients necessary for mass therapy. So a woman upset that Hillary lost when she found out her daughter didn't vote for her, grabbed her daughter and dragged her to a Hillary appearance. And then when they get up to the line, this mother tells Hillary that her daughter didn't vote for her and demands that she apologize to Hillary. Hillary notes that the girl had her head bowed in contrition. But instead of feeling sorry for this girl, being humiliated, Clinton says she wanted to pile on. I wanted to stare right in that little girl's eyes and say, you didn't vote? How could you not vote? You abdicated your responsibility as a citizen in the worst possible time, and you want me to make you feel better? She actually writes that. Then she says, of course I didn't say that. Hillary, the fact that you even, you admit that that was your reaction, I'll give you, if I'm in the same circumstance, I would never run for office, so it wouldn't be bad. But if, if some, if some, one of you thought that your kids had done something that was not favorable and insulting to me, and you knew I was going to be somewhere, and you dragged your kid to appearance to meet me to apologize, uh... I, I I would there was no way that I would see anybody in that circumstance with contempt. And it would never occur to me to pile on 
and start ragging on that person that supposedly had done something that was not helpful to me. I was, don't worry about it. Come on. I, I, I would have, anything, chided the parent in a very soft, unobtrusive way. But the fact that Clinton admits that this is the reaction she had is exactly what I'm talking about. This is a feeling of entitlement. She, she, I, I guarantee you that Hillary Clinton, in her heart of hearts, thinks having to run for election is beneath her. Now, you may think, Rush, no, she can't. I'm telling you, folks, it, it, that may be a bit of an exaggeration, but her attitude is that she shouldn't have to stoop to such mundane things. She is so qualified, so entitled, so deserving that she should just be made president by acclamation. Why didn't she campaign in all these states? Um, only part of it was the fact that she ran the risk of falling on her flat face every day because of the seizure she was having. The other part of it is she didn't think she had to. She thought those people in those states were automatically going to vote for her because she was Hillary Clinton. Well, Donald Trump, she, no way does Trump ever take anything like that for granted. And no other politician worth their salt does either. And then there's, a, there's another story. Hillary Clinton's book signing was as insufferable as you'd expect. And this is in the, in the New York Post. Now, again, evidence here that she just doesn't connect with people. She has no bond. There's no personal investment. The people that are bonded or connected to Hillary are feminists who wanted to win because of some deep meaning in there being a female president. But Hillary, personally, there isn't any connection. You can't get close enough to her. She doesn't want you to know anything. You can't have that kind of bond. And in politics, that's a recipe for disaster and failure. And and she is, I mean, replete with these kinds of failures on the biggest stages politics has to offer. She's incapable of comfortable communication with a crowd of supporters. In a crowd of supporters, she still feels stiff and wooden and like she would rather not be there. Have you ever seen tape of Hillary delivering one of those 20 minute speeches at Goldman Sachs for which she was paid 250 grand? I saw one and I'm thinking, how do the people that write the check not demand the money back? I mean, it was boring, it was sophistic, it was just, it was, it was banal, banal, sorry, it was, it was, I mean, it was nothing. There's no way Hillary met any of the expectations. Of course, just showing up and speaking for 20 minutes was a pro forma thing. The real thing was to give her the money. It was, it was an investment in her presidency uh, for policy favors later on. She had to show up and say something in order to make it look legit. So Hillary had a book signing, the story of this story. She had a book signing. Her arrival time was 11 a.m. And there were, this we talked about yesterday, big line, hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of people. The line was so big, it, there were a couple of people standing outside the store to get in. That's how big it was. There were a lot more waiting, 80 degree heat. Everybody there had to have their bag checked because, you know, Hillary is a formerly very important person, so security threats are taken very seriously. People were not allowed to have food or water in their bags. But it says here that most of the people in line retained their excitement. If they couldn't have Hillary as president, getting to see her sign their book was the next best thing. 30 minutes went by, still she didn't show. It's at 11 o'clock book signing. Then 40 minutes went by and she didn't show. And it wasn't as though you could read her book while you were waiting because you wouldn't get your copy until you approached the dais where Hillary would then generically sign it. She was not even looking at people. They just walked by, she'd sign the book, look up and smile in a very plastic way. And the line kept moving. You weren't allowed, allowed to speak to her. Finally, before noon, she was almost an hour late. She shows up and the, and the crowd starts shouting, Hillary, Hillary, Hillary. And she absorbs the adulation. She gives that royal wave that she's patented. She thinks she's Princess Di. And so 
she not said a word. She didn't apologize for being late. She didn't thank anybody for coming. She didn't say a word to them. And these are the people who had braved the elements, whatever they were, heat, humidity, not allowed food and water in their bags, so I had to go big security check. You might say Hillary devotees. I mean, the people that you would be the most appreciative of. They're there to buy your book, for crying out loud. They're going to spend whatever you're charging them to buy your book, hopefully get a generic signature, not even a word of thanks, not, not an apology, not an explanation for why she was late, not an appreciation that people waited. Uh, there was no change in her behavior. You weren't allowed to stop and talk with her. They just ushered you through. It was like an assembly line. She signed the books generically. Uh, there was one funny thing that happened. Uh, a woman, female journalist, young journalist, got in and started asking Hillary about Benghazi. Started asking Hillary about her 33,000 emails. What happened to your 30? <laughs> she cackled and laughed, and security ushered the woman off, who then ran into Huma. Hey, Huma, why in the world did you stay married to a guy who was sending pictures of you to teenager? And security came in, ran her off. And I hope that happens at everyone. I hope somebody pounds her with these questions at every one of these events that she does. Anyway, let's take a brief time out. We will continue as things that I promise continue to pile up here. And I will commit to getting all of them done. Don't go away. Greetings. Welcome back. El Rushbo, your guiding light on the excellence in broadcasting. Yeah, Hillary Clinton was on the view today, and I'm looking to see if we have the soundbite. I'm not asking for the soundbite. I was just looking to see if we had it. Uh, late arriving story. It happened this morning. And this, this is another, this is a glowing example. To me, just a, a human interest, just a humanitarian uh, thinking. What do we know about the 2016 Democrat presidential primary? We know. We know it is not arguable. We know that it was rigged. We know because of the hack, whoever did it, of the DNC computer network, we know that Debbie Blabbermouth Schultz worked to ensure that Bernie Sanders would not win the nomination, not just with the superdelegates, but the whole thing was rigged. Debbie Blabbermouth Schultz working with Hillary. This is undisputed. It's not talked about because, of course, the narrative is that the Russians cheated in the election to elect Trump. And that's out there. But the, the real election fraud that we know was in the Democrat side of the primaries. So Hillary is on the view today. And she is complaining about Bernie Sanders. And she's telling the babes on the view that she resents how Bernie didn't do enough to help her against Donald Trump. Bernie didn't campaign hard enough. She's sitting on her sizable Arkansas broadbeam butt and not going to Wisconsin and not going to Pennsylvania. And when she does venture out, she almost falls her f flat on her face getting into a van. She's having physical problems of some kind. So she's taking it easy. She's not engaging in retail politics at all. And she's on TV today blaming Bernie Sanders for not helping her. And then she said she was surprised by the increasingly personal attacks on her from Bernie Sanders. And then she brought up what she did for Obama in 2008. She wanted to tell everybody, I was the way you should be. I lost, but I was the bigger person. And I went out and I worked really hard for Barack Obama. Yeah, well, you know why? Obama agreed to pay off her campaign debt or part of it. And that's one of the reasons why she had to take the Secretary of State job. Obama didn't want her outside the tent. Nobody trusts the Clintons, even in the Democrat Party. So they, he wanted her inside the tent and in a job she wasn't qualified for. Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, what are the qualifications? You know, Obama wanted to run that show. She's the figurehead. As party administration, she can't run around and rag on him. So it was strategic, but she's out there telling, I, I worked very hard for Barack Obama, even after losing, I put the party first. As soon as I lost, I turned around, I endorsed him, I worked hard for him. I was arguing with my supporters at the Denver convention in 2008. 
about why they had to quit complaining that I didn't win and go out and support Obama. In her book, Hillary says that Bernie Sanders' attacks on her did the, during the primary did the lasting damage. It's just one of the 16 to 18 different things and people that she is to this day blaming and writing it down. What does she expect Bernie Sanders to do after she rigged his defeat? After she rigged the price, he was wasting his time. He was wasting the money that people had donated. His supporters had no idea. They really thought he had a chance of winning. And if you paid attention to the media, it did appear he was winning every primary for a while. He'd win every primary and Hillary would get a majority of delegates. And, and, and crazy Bernie supporters said, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. And the party would say, well, it's the rules that both agreed to. It's all going to come down to superdelegates. And they got ticked off and they're still ticked off. So here's Hillary Clinton. And believe me, you think this is contradictory, but not the way she looks at the world. She rigs the game so that he can't possibly win and then gets mad at him for not helping her, not doing enough work for her. You probably know people like Hillary Clinton. Whatever they do, they botch. And whatever they botch, they find somebody else to blame. The amazing thing to me is that she's writing all of this down, that it's going to be out there forever. I mean, I, I've, I've never seen a politician engage in such childish, spoiled, rotten behavior as Hillary Clinton is engaging in here. She, and she must be carrying around an amount of resentment that we have not contemplated before. And she has this need to get it all out there. And she's doing it. It's going to be around forever now. Didn't Spielberg direct Jurassic Park? Wasn't that one of his... You would think that the guy who directed Jurassic Park would have been able to do something with Hillary Clinton. He could make dinosaurs come to life and even make them kind of lovable and likable. I mean, admit it. Didn't you kind of like the velociraptors in the lab? And didn't you kind of want one for a pet, wouldn't it? Should have been able to do something with Hillary to make her more likable or more exciting. And, you know, Bernie Sanders, people have forgotten this. He ended up campaigning for Hillary. Do you remember what his requirement was? A private jet. He's that kind of socialist. He demanded a private jet paid for by other people. And he said he would go out and campaign for it. It was too little, too late. And it wouldn't matter because Hillary wasn't. She just. Outside of New York and California, Hillary Clinton just doesn't light them up. Let's get back to the phones. Jim in uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Great to have you, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Ditto's rush. Thank I you, sir. The, the great, I had the great pleasure of watching uh, Hillary on the Today Show this morning. Uh, and uh, during the show, Matt and Savannah asked her, uh, uh, Hillary, uh, if you could pin down the one thing that really did you the most damage, what would it be? And and she blamed uh, Director Comey on the, the, the eve of the election coming out the way he did. I thought that was kind of interesting, Rush, because uh, had uh, she not deleted emails off her server, had a private government server illegally in her house, she never would have had Comey in her life. Yet she's blaming Comey for a problem that she created it's great the election james comey kept her out of jail james comey made sure that there were no criminal charges against her james comey took over the department of justice when loretta lynch blew it by getting on the plane tar the tarmac on the plane with, the, with bill clinton now, i know she's conveniently blaming comey for doing his press conference on july 5th and that's its own story whether comey was was right or wrong in in doing that and it's convenient to, 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 to blame Comey uh, for this. But, of course, Jim here is exactly right. If Hillary Clinton hadn't done any of that, then there would have been nothing for Comey to talk about or for Comey to overlook. Now, we have some audio sound bites from Hillary Clinton on the Today Show today. We have some, uh, 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 start here. Uh, well, no, not 18. That's with Ezra Klein on Vox. Maybe it works. Let me look at it real quick. Okay, let's start with number 18. It's Ezra Klein on uh, on on the the Vox website. Vox 
is a millennial version of the Washington Post. They do journalism different. They they subdivide the stories. They give you the first paragraph or two of the story. Then they say, why does this matter? Then another paragraph explaining to you, because you're an idiot, why it matters. And then after that, they do another subdivision. What does it mean? And then they tell you what it could possibly mean. Uh, it's, it's the news beyond the news. It's explanatory journalism, they say. And Ezra Klein is formerly the Washington Post, and he's a wonderkind. I mean, he's considered the, you know, the future of modern American journalism. So anyway, Hillary appears on their, on their website. And Ezra Klein said, why didn't you do better with white women? This blew their minds. Remember the Billy Bush tape? Trump wasn't supposed to survive that. You know, I, I have to tell you, I'm, but there's something about that Billy Bush tape. Not the tape, the reaction to it. All of these liberal men, if you can call them that, I keep, I, I, I re, if I've read this once, I've read it, I don't know how many times. And do not worry, moms, I'm not going to utter the word that Trump did. But these liberal men acting like what Trump said was one of the greatest offenses, one of the most egregious, outrageous things anyone could ever say. These guys are out doing it or trying to every night. And they're acting like it's the, it's, it's like foreign behavior that a guy would. It's just it, it's mind boggling to me. No, I'm not defend. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not defending any behavior. We're talking about what somebody said here. And these liberal men, these guys would not survive in an athletic locker room. I mean, they'd be offended first and foremost by what they saw. And then when they started hearing what's said in, an, in, in a professional locker room, if, if they're bothered by what Trump said to Billy Bush, they'd be, they'd be shuddering in fear and looking for the door to get out. Just a side observation. So here's Ezra. And remember, after the Billy Bush, that's the inside Hollywood the, the tape where Trump was overheard talking about what he likes to do and can do because... As a big-time celebrity, you can get away with anything. It was thought. See, this is another, the arrogance of the left. It was assumed that every woman in America would be repulsed. That every woman in America would be outraged. How dare, how dare he think of me as being one of those? And that's it. How dare. That's what they thought. Every woman, and, and that Trump wouldn't get a single meaningful female vote. And he went on to win white women. And they don't understand it. They still don't understand it. Remember the story we had two days ago? Glamour magazine. Uh, admittedly, a, a, a women's magazine. There is a story about a bunch of anti-Trump women who end up hooking up with Trump men. Men who voted for Trump and they say the sex has never been better. And they're conflicted as they can be. They're confused. They like it. They like it, but it doesn't make any sense to them. I don't know what they think they're doing when they go have with Trump voting men. But whatever it is that they're expecting, it's not that they end up liking it and they're terribly conflicted. There's a whole story about it. Glamour magazine. A bunch of us Trump supporting men were very happy about that story. Anyway, they can't figure out why white women, any women, voted for Trump. And Ezra Klein, why didn't you do better with white women, Hillary? Why? Absent Comey, I might have picked up one or two points among white women. It stopped my momentum and it hurt me, particularly among women. And I have so much anecdotal evidence for this. And now researchers are starting to pull some of this together. Research and all of a sudden, the husband turns to the wife. I told you, she's going to be in jail. You don't want to waste your vote. You know, the boyfriend turns to the girlfriend and says, she's going to get locked up. Don't you hear? She's going to get locked up. I mean, all of a sudden, it becomes a very fraught kind of conflictual experience. Conflictual? And so instead of saying, I'm taking a chance, I'm going to vote, it didn't work. What is she, conflictual? Conflictive. Anyway, if you recall, James Comey said he wasn't going to charge her. 
James Comey said no reasonable prosecutor would bring charges because while Mrs. Clinton may have broken every law on the book, she didn't intend to. Remember that? And because we can't find any intent, we can't bring charges. Of course, intent is not part of the law. He let her off the hook. Well, everybody in the world heard that. So why does she think people are out there worried about her going to jail? And that's why they can't vote for her. That's not why she lost white women. She didn't even answer the question. She didn't she didn't win white women. She never had them. The biggest these people live under so many misconceptions. They assume, okay, Obama, first African American president, historic, and we'll double down and we'll get the first female president. And see the when you have the first African American president, you can't criticize him. Because if you do, you're a racist. And it worked. The Republicans didn't say a word in criticism of Obama because they didn't want to call racist. So he got away with doing it. And they thought they would replicate that with Hillary. Hillary, first female president, can't criticize her. Otherwise, you're an anti-women chauvinist pig. It was a way to shut down all criticism. They believe that having the first female president is the only thing that matters to other women. They really tell themselves this. So when women don't vote for the first legitimate female presidential candidate, they're confused, can't understand it. She never had the support of a majority of white women. I don't care what the poll said. She never had a majority. And if, if it was close, her campaign served to drive them away. Because she assumes that everybody thinks the way she does and has the same anger and, and resentment that she does. And most people don't want to live that way. Most people don't want to live lives of grievance. Most people don't want to get up every day and figure out who they got to be mad at, who they have to blame, who, who they have to make their lives miserable that day in order to get through the day themselves. That's not how most people want to live life. But it's the way Hillary thinks that most people are because they buy into this notion that life in this country is very bad and it's not fun and it, it sucks. And that's why you need Democrats in power to help people get through the mire. And then they find out that uh, none of their conceptions are actual reality. And so she doesn't know how to answer this. The correct answer is she never had a majority. I don't care what the polls said. She never had a majority of them. Trump did. And they'll never understand why. Just like people reading the Glamour magazine story, if all they see is the headline... Women who didn't vote for Trump are having time of their life, whatever it is, with male Trump voters, sex never better, whatever the story said, confusing as all get out until you get into it. And there's a big difference. Well, that's close enough to the line. It just there's a, If you had your choice, if you're a normal red-blooded American woman, you really had your choice, do you want to hook up with some wuss? Or do you want to hook up with a man? All right. Uh, stand by audio sound by number 27. I'm, I'm, folks, I, I literally, I really am trying to get off of Hillary. The topic, the subject. And I keep getting stuff here. For example, just this. This is, uh, let's see, Hillary, where was she? This is from the cut that comes. She, Hillary, during an interview with NPR. She's out there selling this book like crazy. And it, it's not, it's not. It's not going to do gang up. You watch. Bang up. Sorry. Bang up. Hillary Clinton suggests women didn't vote for her because of the men in their lives. So this is the same question that, that, uh, that uh, what's his face? Uh, Ezra Klein asked her at Vox. At NPR, they asked the same thing. She was asked about the good number of young women who didn't vote for her. And Hillary Clinton suggests that women didn't vote for her because the men in their lives didn't want them to. She claims that young women did not find gender a motivating force. Good. It ought not matter. It ought not matter what the gender of somebody who wants to be president is, unless they don't know. Then it should matter. I mean, if they don't know which bathroom to use, you got a problem. But they probably wouldn't get nominated. 
but it shouldn't matter at all. But look at what does matter to her. Well, I, young women did not find gender a motivating force. I think it's much more difficult to unpack all of this. And with respect specifically to young women, I do think that for a lot of young women, gender is just not the motivating force that maybe it will be in the future. Then she cites a conversation with Sheryl Sandberg, CEO, COO, something at Facebook, uh, wrote the book Lean In, talked about her research that indicates the more successful a woman is, the less likable she appears. See. She also said uh, opportunity to push the concept that women may not have voted for Clinton because the men in their lives didn't want them to. Now, folks, you st stop and think of that, that. That may you may think, hmm, OK, but that really is a profound uh, excuse. A leftist woman saying that leftist women are only allowed to have opinions shaped by the men in their lives. That is not a testament to feminism. Here is, we're talking about why didn't more liberal Democrat women vote for Hillary? And she says, because the men in their lives didn't want them to. What does the men in their lives matter? Isn't that what feminism is? You're not supposed to care what the man says. You're not supposed to care what the man wants. You're supposed to be independent from all that. What an indictment of feminism that answer is. But once again, she's just throwing things up against the wall and hoping they stick, because that's just more blame spreading and shaming and excusing anything but the truth, which is, I guess they just didn't find me excited. I guess they didn't like my policies because nobody knew what they were. She couldn't tell you the reason she was running outside of her, her turn, her entitlement. Grab 27. This is the actual soundbite of her on The View today, blaming crazy Bernie uh, for not helping her. The question comes from Sonny Hostin. You know, you get a lot of criticism. People say, well, she won't take responsibility for the loss. I've read your book. You clearly took responsibility for the loss. Hostin sucking up here. You've always taken responsibility, but you claim others share responsibility for your loss as well. You talk about Bernie Sanders. You say he shares responsibility. What do you mean? You know, by March or April, I had an insurmountable lead. I ended up winning by 4 million votes. I know what it's like to lose because I lost in 2008 uh -huh. to uh -huh. President Obama. Right. As soon as I lost, I turned around, I endorsed him. I worked hard for him. I was arguing with my supporters at the Denver convention in 2008 about why they had to quit complaining that I didn't win and get out and support Barack Obama. And I didn't get that respect. <laughs> this is just embarrassing. And of course, that brain dead crowd's in there applauding. You know, Sonny Hostin's question, I'm sure they worked that out before the show started. Hillary said, here's just what I want you to ask me. This is the way I want you to ask it. Sonny Hostin, fine. Uh, I don't think they're going to surprise Hillary with a question on this show. So she's got this answer ready to go. She wants to say this, is my point. This She thinks this is a big deal. Got to get this point out. How hard she worked for Obama. Don't tell anybody that Obama had agreed to pay off her campaign debt. Don't tell anybody that Obama was wanting to keep her close and had offered her a place in the uh, in the regime. Uh, and so now she's turning around, trashing crazy Bernie. And of course, don't mention the fact that the reason you got four million votes is that they rigged the election in your favor at the DNC. Here's a real question for you: Was Hillary ever really ahead at any time? And I, there may have been a, a period of time, but, but Trump ended up winning. And, of course, in the Electoral College, the vote there was not close. Now, we know that, that all of the big data analysts, the guys that were saying Hillary had a 91.2% chance of winning this day and a 78.8% chance the next day and the next week, they were not even close. And the standard polling, Gallup. Uh, NBC, Wall Street, they were not even close. The real question, was Hillary ever really leading? She thought she was. She thought she was headed for landslide. And, of course, she never was. I mean, they ended up believing it. Anyway, one hour left. Hang on. Hang on.